Okay, well, welcome to week four of 2014 EDN, making sense of educational, well, making sense of learning and educational technologies. So this week we're moving into our block of study, um, looking at various educational technologies. Um, last week we finished up a particular block um, with the Delphi process. And hopefully you've had a chance to explore the Delphi um, tool mm -hmm. and have a go of the Delphi study invitation that I sent you uh, for the one that I created. How did you go with that, Neve? Uh, actually, I see that, but I'm not completed. Okay, but so... Actually, uh, yeah, I see all the structure and... Uh, how you put the questions. Okay, so you've gone and, and looked at the questions that I posed and how I did that? Yeah. Oh, good. So it'd be good if you could practice um, creating your own um, before you need to do it for your assignment, which is fairly soon, um, just so that you can iron out any bugs with that and we can test it out um, and make sure that your questions and so forth are um, done. If I could ask you to go in and just answer some of those first round questions so that I can progress it to the second round. Um, that would help. Um, so I see that you haven't finished answering those questions just yet. Um, yeah, I will do it soon because I was busy with another assignment. I just submit last night. Now, well, congratulations. On that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure where the others are. I do know there were a number of people planning on being here this evening. Um, Maybe they are also busy with another assignment. <laughs> that is always possible, yes. But let's hope um, they'll join us in a moment. Yeah. Okay, so have you had a chance to look at the readings for this week? Not for this week because I I'm, um, can say behind. I'm doing the uh, first one readings okay actually i started today uh, of the module one readings i did today like delphi studies and another one yep and no i i understand um so the, the way i've structured the next four weeks is that there's some fairly involved readings um, i've done them up as little sets of readings so each week there's two sets of readings to do. Um, now you don't have to read them in incredible detail because they go through lots and lots of tools and technologies. Yeah. But there's one on ICT and one on ICT integration. Um, yeah, there, there are too many readings. <laughs> well, we do need to give you enough breadth of understanding about what's available in educational technology so that when you come to do your own um, analysis of your workplace that you can make some informed decisions as to what would be appropriate or not appropriate to have yeah. in those places. But you don't have to master or understand all of the technologies that we look at. Um, certainly the ones for this week are all very basic ones such as using interactive whiteboards or um, creating websites or EPUBs okay. and, and all of those um, basic technologies. Um, I will but, catch it soon, but uh, this week. Uh, that would be good because we don't want you to fall behind. Because next week we sort of get into the more um, esoteric or different sorts of new technologies, such as computer gaming and um, online data analysis and all these other sort of more specific things. Uh, uh, but this week we're just covering the basics. Okay. Now I see we have at least one viewer that's watching, well, two viewers now that are watching. Uh, the broadcast. If you're part of the course, um, you can either ask me questions using the Q&A um, option that you should see on your screen, or I have sent you an email um, with the link to the Hangout. Um, and if that doesn't work, if you could email me your um, email that you're currently on, I can then send you a direct invitation to join the Hangout. 
<laughs> okay. Um, so, Nivet, is there any questions you'd like to ask about the work you've been doing um, over the last couple of weeks? Actually, I have not done yet. I've started today. <laughs> and, uh, okay, so you've got a bit of catching up to do. Yeah. I'm with okay, then. Um, well, probably the main thing to make sure that you've got a, ha a handle on okay. is that um, Delphi study, because that's what forms the basis of your first assignment. Um, yeah. That's, that's due very soon, so you do need to make sure that you've got that started um, and that you can find a number of participants. Uh, they don't need to be full experts, but as long as they can provide some answers to your questions and okay. can, you can go through and you can show the outcomes of a Delphi research process, uh, that's the main thing we're after you showing. Uh, one question I have, uh, how can I like uh, design? Because I have seen yours. Uh, I have to like edit in that or I have to make new one. For... Okay, this is in the Delphi tool? Yeah. Yes, you do need to um, log in as an administrator. So you need to make a create an administrator account. Um, okay. So when you go into it for the first time, it'll give you some options. Um, it's a very easy process to do, but you do need to log in as an administrator, which will then allow you to create your own Delphi studies. Okay, I will try. And then the basic process is you add a series of questions, say 10 questions. Um, generally, they should be questions that people can give s some rankings to, so they can um, they can order them between one and five or something like that so that they can actually give an informed opinion um, and we can then compare those. Okay. So you'll add your questions, then you'll add the email addresses of the experts you wish to invite and okay. then there'll be an option to invite them and the, the software will then automatically send out invitations to those um, people and they'll be able to then log in and answer your questions. And once you've got enough of them answering those, you can then start the second round of questions where you present the results of the first round to them and they can then um, respond again with some changed opinions based upon the consensus that the group has formed in the first round. Okay. I also got one uh, from the uh, Diana. Yes, you'll find a lot of, a lot of people will um, invite each other, uh, particularly mm -hmm. the practice ones. So it's another chance to have a, have a go at them and see how other people are putting their questions together and yeah. just become familiar with the, that piece of software. Yeah. And welcome, Beth. Hello. Good, Good to see you here. Finally arrived. Okay. So... Don't seem to have an awful lot of people no. here this week. Um, I do understand that um, assignments are starting to become a focus, but it is useful if you attend these sessions so that you um, get an understanding of the content of the course and you can ask questions and have them clarified. So, Beth, we were just going through the Delphi um, tool. I know you've had a chance to have a look at that during the week. Um, yes. And I'm just waiting for um, particularly Nav to finish up her um, answering the questions and also for Hulan, also Hutan. Um, and then I'll close that first round and it will then send out the res results of that first round of questions and then you'll have a chance to respond to the second round of questions, just to see how that two-round process occurs in the Delphi survey. Yeah, sorry for delay, I will do by tonight. That'd be great if you can. I, I will close it off um, tonight so we can get the second round going. People who want to yeah. move on and do their own surveys. So Beth, do you have any questions about the Delphi survey before we go on to this week's content? Um, I, I'm just, as I said in my email to you, I'm just waiting 
from the Delphi people to get back to me because I've had issues even logging in. Um, and I went to set up a session to be, put my questions in and it just kept saying error. Okay, that's... Um, yeah, it's... The tool's been around a long time, so they may not be um, monitoring it very closely in terms of um, helping out people with difficulties logging in and so forth. Um, they don't wait too long <laughs> for a response. I, um, maybe with different email addresses, if you've got access to some different... Um, no, I've just gone you, in. You really want to create I've gone, a... Sorry. Now, go on. I've gone in as me from uni. It's the first time I've ever been in there. And it's, um, yeah, I'm, I'm there. I've got my question. I've got my topic. And I've put the, de the description part in. And every time I click OK, some error comes up at the top. And I've taken screenshots of it and sent it to them, but I haven't heard back from them. So it won't let me go any further. Okay, in. so... And Delphi questions. Sorry. So this is in creating your own Delphi survey. That's right. Is that when you go to create a session? That's you doing your own. Yes. Well, if you've logged in as an administrator, yes. If you created your yes. own, um, survey. So what I might get you to do is name and a password and everything, and it's you like you know you're in. But then when I go to actually type in the title of my session and the description, the warning thing comes up. Okay. Um, if you send me the screenshots of that, I might be able to give some assistance. Um, it's certainly it's not my tool, and but I have used it a few times now, so I might be able to see Okay. Um, happening there for you. Okay, I might try and do that now while we're talking. Um, yeah, so okay. I'm basically, and I did send you my questions, so I'm, ho I'm, I'm I mean, that, probably not a forum here right now to, to give feedback on that, but I've, I've sort of come up with what I think could be the questions. I just need a bit of guidance on making sure that I've shaped questions the right way. No, they, the, the questions are certainly fine. Um, my only aspect was some of them... Um, would be difficult to rank. Um, I may have I may have misinterpreted the tool uh, myself, but from my understanding is you can't really have them um, submit uh, answers and then rank those. Um, you have to actually provide. You can ask them to provide open-ended questions, responses, yeah. but they yeah. won't necessarily be ranked because it's just a single... I'm trying to shape it because obviously I haven't gone into that second phase where I'm creating the questions. I've just seen the three questions that you've created yes. and I've seen that I've got, you know, you can say, what do you think of these and you give them a set of ten things to choose from or whatever, a set yes. of things to rank. And then one of your other questions said something like, um, you know, what do you, what's missing here? And you, it was, you had to rank it as well. Like oh, I had okay. to put the next to it, as well as writing, as writing what I felt was uh, missing. Yes. So in that case, it you can frame the question around them, say, giving the importance of the. So they, right. they could they could they could um, provide a response, and then they could rank the importance of it, but they couldn't that's rank it in comparison to, to other questions. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Like, I ask a question to rate what they think. Then I, my next question is, is there anything missing and how would you rate that is what I'm uh, really trying to yeah. say. Okay, I see now. Yes, now that's that's perfectly fine. Yeah, okay. And now uh, your questions do seem to cover a, a good breadth of what you want to find out, which is good. Yep. And okay. they'll inform your second assignment um, based upon those results. Yes. I just need to get past the Delphi bit and then I'm right. <laughs> Yes, um, but yeah, send me those screenshots and I'll have a look and see if I can work out. It may just be something you haven't filled in or um, yeah. a required field that's incorrectly um, got something um, text in there instead of a number or something like that. That's right. It'll be something minor, I'm, I imagine. Because the only issue is is that if I can't, my next issue, I'm sorry if I'm holding everyone else up, sorry about that, um, is that when I've got 
like I've got to put in my Delphi study code at the end of module, the end of the section. I can't go into anything new until I do that, and I find that a little bit frustrating. Oh no, you can. You, you should be able to just indicate that you have completed that section and progress on. Okay, I'll have another play with it. Keep going, then. I don't want to hold everybody up. Sorry about that, everyone. No, no, that, that's an important point. Um, the the sections at the end are generally self-identifying um, that you've actually completed that and then wish to progress on. So you can just say that you've done it and then okay. go back and add it in later. All right, no worries. I'll have a play. Um, let me know if that's not the case, but that's certainly how I recall it worked. Okay. I'll have a play while I'm listening. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so I'm getting from that then that you probably haven't done the readings for this week. No. <laughs> I was trying to get onto them yesterday, but I couldn't. Okay. I'm going uh, in and play around. <laughs> okay, so that makes it a little bit difficult to go through the readings in great detail, but... Um, so the uh, the readings for this week are, or well, the following, the next four weeks will be based on various educational technologies um, that you'll be then able to use when you to consider when you're framing your own implementation plan for the use of new technologies in your particular organisation. Um, so we start off this week with some fairly basic ones, just looking at uh, the general range of ICTs from PowerPoint presentations to um, ebooks to um, use of Word and various other fundamental tools. But we also look at um, ICT integration theory. Um, so I might share that screen and. Okay. Let me just share and have a quick look at those. Okay, so this is the um, ebook on information and communication technologies. Now you can download them as an iBook or as a PDF. The the iBook has the advantage of being able to click on the links and the videos and have them play. Um, if you are using it as a PDF and you want to play a particular movie or particular image that you want to click on, you do need to come to this section at the very start. Um, of acknowledgements and you can then click on the various um, movies and play them. Once you're actually in the PDF of the document, there will be links in the text that you can click on, but in the main you won't be able to click on the images or the um, embedded movies and so forth. Um, so where I have, generally I've included links in the text related to those, uh, but there are a few little movie clips and so forth that may not be associated in that way. But if you come back to the acknowledgements, you will be able to go to the particular movie and click on it and play that. Or if you're using an iBook or a Macintosh computer, you can open it as an iBook and um, access them directly. So the first little section is on use of presentation tools. Um, PowerPoint and Keynote are the main ones, but also tools such as slide casting and Google Slides. Um, and most of you will be quite familiar with using presentation tools. But they're an important ICT. Uh, and more recently, we have tools such as Prezi and PreziU, um, which provide a different sort of presentation uh, rather than the linear um, PowerPoint style presentations. Then there's a section there for you to read up about interactive whiteboards and tablets and tables. Um, so interactive tables, people thought they might take off. They um, haven't really taken off as a technology. Uh, they, are, they do have some uses, but they are rather expensive and providing an interactive whiteboard for every student or group of students is very expensive. Um, Generally, people have, or schools have moved towards the use of interactive tablets, um, like iPads or other tablet devices, 
rather than uh, tables for individual students or small groups of students. And then there's a few uh, video montages of what the future may be like uh, with educational technology. So I'll just pause there for a second and see if there's any questions. Um, so from Beth or Nav, Nav um, or from those watching online, um, if you want to use the Q&A option to ask questions, you can do that and I'll respond to those. Just letting you know I've put in, I've, I've got to the next section. I just typed in a lot of the next section. That's so, fine. Um, if I've cheated, sorry. Um, I'm in the next section. I'm just downloading your iBooks and I'm following along with you. Okay. And now, do you have any questions as we go? No, so far. Okay. The next little bit I talk about is around interactives. And these are small little computer programs used for demonstrating particular ideas. Um, Education Services Australia um, has a large collection of these, we call them learning objects, but they can also include short little movies or audio clips, um, but often they're small little pieces of software that provide some interaction that you can put into other documents or PowerPoint presentations or interactive whiteboards. And more recently ESA has set up a database of those called Scoodle. Um, which has all of those resources available to teachers. Uh, you do need to be a teacher or have an education email address to be able to access those. Um, but they do have a, a good collection of resources. So they're called learning objects. Um, it is possible to create your own learning objects. There's various technologies available to assist you in doing that. Um, and most often they're used for either instruction um, or guided instruction where students are working through a range of activities or for drilling, or for drilling practice activities. Now someone's got a bit of feedback and I suggest it's probably Beth given you're the one that... Um, Beth, do you have some headphones by any chance that you might be able to use? Uh, no, I, the, 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 my kids have stolen them. <laughs> I haven't got anything. Okay. What do you want me what I might do is just when you're not speaking, if you could mute, um, so there should be a red mute yes. microphone option. Sorry, when you're not speaking, if you could just click on that, that would then stop the. Uh, sorry? Shouldn't be. Could you just say that again? I didn't quite get that. Am I doing your talk, flipping around screens while you're talking? Yep, now that, that's fine to do that. It's just that um, we're getting a bit of um, feedback from my voice coming through your speakers. My apologies. Um, I'll put myself on mute while I don't speak. That'd be wonderful. Sorry. Okay, so there's a range of drill and practice tools like um, athletics and other um, interactive games and and I'll give you a few links and some readings about those. Uh, the Khan Academy is probably the most famous of those, but there are, are other ones as well. Then other ICTs we use a lot, uh, polling system, use during lectures or even nowadays during online sessions where we ask questions of the audience and they then respond and we get some interactive data collected about those responses. We used to do that through use of clickers where each audience member had a particular device that they could then respond to. More often now though we use mobile phones and other devices or their, people's laptops and they respond using their own devices. Examples there. The other main ICT that's commonly used nowadays is around um, self-publishing. Um, creating your own iBooks or other interactive texts. That all started with websites where teachers create their own websites that students can then work through either during a course or um, as a resource that they can use. And there's a whole range of those that are available. I tend to use Google Sites and WordPress but there's a whole range of other ones such as Weebly and 
um, lots of other free uh, website creation tools, and some schools go to the extent of using their own, um, such as Education Queensland schools, where they create their resources in those tools. That leads into ePortfolios, where students create a collection of resources that represent and we can use those for three main uses. One is a de de developmental tool, um, often used in courses I teach around ICT, where we're using the creation of ePortfolios as part of developing students' T. Um, but for more general use in education as a reflective tool, uh, for students to see the progression of their learning, and as a representation tool for showcasing their learning, um, often for assessment or for going for job interviews, so ePortfolios are a sort of an organisational approach to presenting students' digital presence um, in terms of what they ha have engaged with in their learning. More and more now we're moving towards what's what are called personal learning environments, where students have their own websites, and on those websites they set out their learning goals and the processes of their own learning. So they really create their own ePortfolios. Range of tools. Um, they might use uh, LinkedIn as a professional resume tool. They might use um, some Google tools for creating websites. Uh, they might use other things such as Instagram for sharing documents and images about themselves. And they all go towards building a, a student's uh, digital footprint. Um, now we often have our personal digital footprints, which can cause problems in education because people put up inappropriate material. But there's also a professional digital footprint. Generally today, anyone going for a job, uh, the employer will do a search for them and look to see what information is publicly available about that prospective employer or employee. And the same happens in education. So having a professional presence on the, on the web is an important aspect, um, just as it is to not have too much of a personal uh, presence if you're in a professional position such as a teacher. But that can go into more extensive things such as blogs and wikis where people maintain online journals about their learning or um, areas that they've got some expertise or interest in. And a blog is simply an online diary um, where each new entry is placed at the beginning of the blog and you can go back and read previous entries. A wiki is a little bit different. Um, you're probably familiar with Wikipedia, same thing. Um, you can create your own wikis and they're web pages um, interrelated to each other. So for example, the Minecraft wiki is, is several, several tens of thousands of pages long. Um, and the advantage of a wiki is it can also be by a collective of people. So all the people playing Minecraft Will contribute and will have contributed to the creation of that particular wiki. And just as Wikipedia is a social um, creation where everyone can edit and suggest changes to that encyclopedia um, and it's then reflected um, in what we know as Wikipedia. But they can often be a very useful thing to create in um, students' learning. So you can create a wiki for. resource for all the students um, in having a better understanding of that particular concept under study. So you might be studying dinosaurs, so all the students can go off and create their own pages about different dinosaurs, um, and then you can go through a process of working out where there's duplication and combining pages, and students can then read each other's work and get a much better understanding than based on their own Okay, and second last one, uh, we have digital books, very popular nowadays with iBooks and other ebook readers, um, where instead of to web, we publish as apps that can be then read on mobile devices or on laptops. And um, iBooks author became one of the early ones in this area and has remained very, very strong. 
um, where you can create an interactive text um, that can engage students in the learning process. And we also have tools such as iTunes U where students can work through um, a bit like we're doing in this, week, in this um, WordPress course structure. Uh, they work through a series of activities, um, often involving iBooks and other videos, and progress through a series of learning uh, resources. Now, while iBooks author and other um, ebook authoring tools um, exist, there are ones that you can create just through apps, um, such as Book Creator and Scribble Press, and you can create the actual ebook on your mobile device. And then we have graphics and video, photo editing and animated images, and video editing and screencasting. Uh, screencasting is simply where you record what's happening on your screen, a little bit what you're seeing at the moment, uh, where my screen is being broadcast to you, to you uh, but it could also be recorded and then viewed later um, with this voiceover annotation. And then the last sort of ICT that's commonly used nowadays is 3D modeling, where instead of creating still images, uh, you create a 3D model using various easy to use tools, and then students use those to develop particular stories. Okay, let me just pop back. So that's a range of ICTs that are available um, at the moment. There are new ones coming out all the time, and that's what we use tools such as the Horizon reports to keep abreast of those changes. But does anyone have any other ICTs that they're familiar with that I haven't mentioned? And if you're watching live online, you can ask questions in the using the Q&A um, button. Or if you're trying to join us, send me an email, and I will send you the link to join the session. So Beth, Beth and Nav, do you have any other ICTs that you could suggest I haven't included in that list? Uh, you will need to unmute yourself if you want to speak. Yeah, I don't think so. You have included a lot of... Yes, I have mentioned quite a few of them. Um, and remember, you're not expected to go through and follow every link and, and learn about all of these technologies in great detail. Um, the idea of these is just to give you an overview of the sorts of technologies that schools are implementing so that you can consider them as you develop your implementation plans for your own organizations for your second assignment. Beth, did you add any suggestions for other ICTs that haven't been mentioned? Oops. Uh, you've covered quite a lot there. We do, um, and I write, a lot of um, uh, I change you courses, like all my year fives and sixes, um, all their core subjects are done through um, I change you courses, so that's a big thing for us. Our big new project is our STEM and STEAM program that we're trying to develop in the junior schools, so my drive and my part of my assignment will be how to get um, the rest of the staff on board with that and all the implications that come along with trying to that implement it. Okay, well then we might just um, jump to the second text uh, which is more focused around theory. Let me just share that with you again. Okay, so this one goes through various um, theoretical aspects around integrating ICT and some of the strategies you might be able to think about implementing um, when you come to consider how to get all of your staff engaged uh, with uh, Beth. So I'll just jump through the links. Um, so a little bit about change and change the change process um, and how challenging it can be. Uh, metaphor of the pencil, where we have certain people that lead the way, 
um, certain ones that and we call those early adopters. Then there are the, the people, the group of teachers that follow the early adopters, new technologies when they hear about them. And then there's the bulk of teachers that tend to adopt technologies once they've seen them well established. And then there's always a few that are very difficult to shift and engage with new technologies. Other innovation adoption um, models. Uh, we've got the innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and laggards. Um, that's the other main innovation lifecycle process. So it's well established that it does take time to get all staff on board, and you do need to think about that in your implementation plans how you're going to cope with the various groups. Um, of course, the needs of your early adopters will be quite different. Okay, a little bit there about the horizon reports. We can get those sort of different ideas, but we heard about those last week. Then there's um, various aspects of ICT integration, the levels that teachers will get to. Um, generally, most people start off with inaction. Um, they're not particularly interested in an area until they've been engaged with that, but then they start investigating the use of our really using it regularly using them with their students and they then progress through what was it been identified as a critical use border where they then to really start relying upon the use of ICT as they couldn't really imagine uh, the learning process without effective uses of ICT and then finally into transformational um, uses where they're starting to find new technologies themselves, not just relying upon used technologies. So a little bit about the theory of ICT and what ICT means in terms of the new Australian curriculum. And a few little video clips here that you can use to understand more about the ICT, um, which is information and communication technologies, all the uses of computers that we use in our general um, educational uses. Then we've got a couple of models. The SAMA model, um, substitution, augmentation, modification, revision model, is where most teachers um, will start off substituting um, a digital technology with for a pre-existing technology, such as an interactive whiteboard substituting for a blackboard. Um, augmentation is a little bit more beyond that, is where we start doing things differently with these tools, um, but still really just an enhancement of what was already being done. Um, so it might be using an ebook, but as an, as an alternative to using a hard, hard copy book. Um, we're still treating it the same way in terms of reading the text, um, but just one is digitized and one is not. So that's an augmented use, but it's not necessarily a transformational use. But staying on the concept of digital text, if we now start including videos and the ability for students to annotate and respond to questions and do quizzes within the text, then that would start being a modification. Where we're now doing things differently because the digital technology is available. And then finally we get to what's called redefinition, where we start thinking about doing things that we couldn't have even conceived of without having the technology available, such as maybe students reading together um, and um, re reconstructing the text as they read into a new text um, that can be then used by other students, or some other aspects that we, we wouldn't have been able to do without the technology. So that's the SAMA model. Um, there's a whole lot of resources there and examples that you can go into and look at. Um, how that's used, and I've given a number of matrices with different examples, and you can go and look at all the different um, examples there, broken down into different year groups. Um, and then, oops, still loading, we should have the TPAC model. There we are. Now, the TPAC model is a model used for selecting um, when it is appropriate or not to use a particular technology or what particular technology to use in a particular context. Um, 
the TPAC model combines uh, content knowledge, pedagogical knowledge, and technological knowledge. So content knowledge is our knowledge of the content. So if we're a science teacher, it might be our knowledge of biology and all the different things about the scientific study of biology. Our pedagogical knowledge is our knowledge of how to teach. And there's a certain overlap with our content knowledge because there's a certain amount of pedagogical approaches that are best suited for teaching biology, um, such as maybe doing a dissection. You wouldn't find dissections as a pedagogy used for English teaching in the main. Um, but it's a particular approach to teaching that overlaps with um, our content knowledge. But then there's also an overlap of technologies or ICTs. So there's certain technologies that would be useful for the teaching of biology and there'd be also say um, microscopes and um, dissection kits and virtual um, frog dissections all those sort of specific technologies that would relate to particular content. But there'd also be certain technologies that relate to different pedagogical approaches. So if you were going to do project-based learning, there'd be certain technologies that would assist with um, managing and running projects. Uh, it might be a shared website or a wiki where students can work together on a task. While a different pedagogical approach, say direct instruction, technologies such as interactive whiteboards or just PowerPoint presentations would be more suited for that particular pedagogical approach. And then in the middle of all three, there'd be certain pedagogies or certain technologies and pedagogies and content that all work really well together. So it might be a project-based learning around creating an, an app to explain the cycle of frogs uh, using project-based learning um, and that might be a particular approach that's using a wiki and a um, shared video tool where students can video various aspects of the process and um, combine their pedagogy and their content all around that. So there's a few examples there of the TPAC model. Um, okay, then there's we have around the use of ICT in education. We have the national professional standards which set down the expectations of all teachers um, at, a, at graduate and um, proficient and accomplished. And there are also ICT standards related to those. And I've given a bit of a summary of those various expectations on that page and the page following. In, Queens, in the Education Queensland schools, they did have the Smart Classrooms framework for many years, which provided a certificate process. Um, however, that was discontinued a couple of years ago now, but it was a very good system for developing teachers' uh, ICT skills process. And then we have various international standards. Um, this is a little bit out of date now. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, they released the new ISTE standards. Um, but there's a range of standards details internationally. Um, and then in our Australian curriculum, we have the ICT general capabilities, which define what students should be able to learn about the use of ICT themselves for their own um, teach. Now it's back focusing on students and the technologies they should be using. And I go through there some of the aspects around that. And then in Queensland, we have our own, um, or Education Queensland, expectations. There's a few documents there around those, although they're getting a little bit dated now. And again, internationally, there's the um, sets of international standards. So the idea is to provide you with some background. Um, when you come up with your own implementation plans as to the sorts of expectations you should be setting for teachers and other educators in your organization and the technologies that you can include in engaging them with and some of the expectations around what you should be able to expect them to achieve with those technologies.
comments, questions, or statements? While you're thinking yeah. of those and unmuting, uh, Nev, Nev, yes, please. Yeah, there's a lot of lot to read. As uh, for me, it's a uh, very uh, new information because I have not so much knowledge about the digital technology. I do understand, but remember, this course is designed to cover a whole range of students, from those that are just starting out with focusing on the use of ICT in your classrooms, through to those that are managing um, ICT developments for their whole school or for their whole organization or country. Um, so there's a whole lot of content in there and not all of it will necessarily be relevant that you may um, potentially go into. So please be selective. Um, use it as a general overview to get an understanding of the sorts of things that you could think about. But you may then focus on just a couple of aspects for your own particular. So I can certainly understand how it would be very overwhelming if it was your very first introduction to the use of technology in education. Yeah. Uh, keep it into context and use it just as a general reference. So focus on the headings and just get a general idea of what each of those headings means. Um, and if there's particular ones that you're interested in, then there'll be some material there that you can read further into. Beth, did you have anything you wanted to add? Hi. Um, look, I'm just taking it all in. Um, a lot of that, yeah, it's familiar. I, I'm aware of all of that. I'm just constantly in my mind thinking about how I can use some of those things to think ahead into like the second assignment even looking at the strategies that I want to implement so it's taking it all on board looking at everything that's there and pulling it into the context that I want to put it into. Absolutely and over the next three weeks we're going to be looking at a whole range of um, technologies so national gaming and virtual worlds um, the week after we're going to look at learning management systems and learning analytics uh, and then mobile learning pedagogies. Um, so that will then finish module two which is the various technology and then getting into module three we look at the different approaches to setting up a particular environment um, that's technology rich, uh, looking at different learning environment models, ICT leadership in educational organizations, Alice. And then we, that'll have you all then prepared for module four, which is around actually affecting change, um, looking at the different models of education and how we can actually um, try to influence how we can change what occurs in an educational organisation. Mm. Yeah, I think that'll be that'll be a good bit to get to. Okay, so that's a little bit disappointing. We. Um, haven't seen any questions coming through from anyone online or any emails. Um, just as a message for those that are watching this later, um, if you could email me and let me know uh, if you can help me in uh, framing each week's session so that I know how much to pre-prepare or to rely upon Q&A um, and just helps helps me make sure or helps that you're disengaged from the course. Um, I know there's a lot to cover and you've got other assignments and then other pressures on you, um, but it's important that you keep progressing along so that it doesn't become overwhelming at the end. Up on 9 p.m. So do we have any other final questions or comments that you'd like to discuss? Um, I'm all right. Thank you, Jason. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, Nav, you're still muted if you're asking something. No, I just say thanks. Okay, then. <laughs>
And I'll see you both again next week, I hope, along with lots of others. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, then. Many thanks, Bye -bye. Jason. I've sent you that email with that screenshot, so we'll go from there. Okay, I'll email you back on that. All right, cheers for that.